Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Ezekiel, the founder and CEO of Creative Virtual, and I'm joined today by Phil Hall, the founder and MD of Elsewhere. And uh, today we want to talk about conversational AI, which is a very topical subject at the moment, and some of the issues that we're both uh, seeing at, seeing around this. When we when we look to see not just like our organisations are going to use this, but our governments are going to be able to play a role um, in this field. Uh, there's lots going on, of course, not just in the conversational AI space, but lots of concern around, and there has been for some time, even before the large language models appeared, uh, you know, bots being used to influence elections even, um, and the whole, yeah, risk to even democracy. And I saw that the British Prime Minister getting together with the US President and um, you're talking about an, an AI safety summit, I think they termed it, coming up uh, this autumn in the UK or being proposed. It's an interesting one, isn't it? You know, the internet is global. Um, there are some countries, obviously, that uh, uh, that do uh, try and control it <laughs> uh, more than others, but but essentially, it's um, it's it's a global tool, and and um, I know people still describe it as the Wild West, <laughs> still. <laughs> Um, but but with AI and some of the risks that it does present uh, to democracies in particular, how do you see, Phil, um, that developing and how do you think governments will uh, react or need to react to that? Mm. Well, I think the, um, uh, the, there's, a, there's a triangle, there's a really interesting triangle which um, came up at a, a healthcare AI uh, uh, event that I mm. went to well, now that uh, late in uh, May, early June, 2023, so recent for this recording, um, and it was um, run by a lady called uh, Alison Gardner, who works for Nice. I mean, as I said earlier, uh, in earlier conversation, um, we're very focused on healthcare at the moment, and that ability for organisations like Nice and the National Institute of Health Research. Um, UK RI researching councils more broadly is that we have a, a, a governance piece, you know, at the top, and then we have an adopters and a suppliers piece at the mm -hmm. bottom. You know, now I think if you turn that sideways, then you get into a discussion which is about media and consumption, and the kind of things that are coming through from, you know, reasonably venerable traditional media sources like um, Panorama. Um, mm. or um, The Guardian and the uh, pieces that have come through there about, you know, a robot wrote this article and then you look in the small print and it says, well, actually it wrote a load of stuff, but it was slightly better than an intern. You know, I think these things are, are, are quite reprehensible, but let's go back to the to square onto this triangle. Um, the ability to identify what kind of governance we need and where that governance is, is coming from is a moot point. Um, you know, good luck to Rishi Sunak with his broader political endeavours. Um, but I think that, you know, ignoring um, uh, uh, the Englishness of the conversation that went on there with the two characters at hand and Rishi's broader uh, 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 history and his um, his interest in a more diverse society and culture, we're still only looking at the top of the English language. And, you know, there's there's quite clearly uh, a line to be taken there that um, uh, America as well has got so much um, Spanish being spoken now and the world more broadly that, you know, if we look at what the AI is that we're looking at in the conversational piece, we obviously we're not looking at the image piece, it's a separate um, mm -hmm. set of conversations altogether. Um, I think the governance of AI on the basis of language is a moot point. You know, if we needed to have something which was about safety, I think that there's actually a parallel and potentially more important thing that should be discussed, which is about the quality of data from disparate languages and cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than just go, it's about ensuring that somebody can't release an autonomous piece of artificial intelligence into a system that can't be pulled out of it. But we already know what those things are called. They're, it's hacks, it's bugs, it's software, sure. you know. Yeah. Let's, let's do the whole chat GPT at the end of the day is recommender system. Yeah. If, let's come back to the uh, the simplest sort of point here. Um, ChatGPT is based on the same basic premises as something says, if you bought this, you'd probably like that. 
yeah? yeah chat gpt is saying that if it sees this letter then it's probably the next letter the next word the next concept the next sentence yeah, yeah? so i think the safety piece of changing the models is one element i think the safety piece about ensuring um uh, uh, the delivery in high risk areas is going to be better i think the the piece which is about governments and oversight and particularly the safety piece with um you know biden and sunak and hopefully a lot of other people <laughs> hopefully a lot of other people that don't speak english um mm -hmm. you know um in the uk is uh is a good aspiration i mean you know we're we're both british guys you know it's like you know we've worked internationally and um, your company has international arms um you know my training was an anthropologist before i came into it so my personal view on the kind of importance of society and culture when applying controls on the content which you just touched on a second ago is um is super important particularly in high risk areas and i think um, the council of europe um with the work that they did identifying different high risk areas was a useful step forwards um, I don't know that it was necessarily the right step, although there's, mm -hmm. a, there's an obviousness of, you know, don't put autonomous AI systems in areas where um, mental health um, could be an issue. You know, if you've got a probability of 90 percent and uh, a key question from somebody who is self-harming is, mm -hmm. can I self-harm? You don't want one in 10 people to get the answer yes. You know, it's it's um, you know, there needs to be some quite sort of clarity there. But if we go back one step um, and we ignore a sort of sci fi route of sort of laws of robotics being applied to AI, um, there was um, something like 80 or so ethics frameworks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Alison Gardner uh, mm -hmm. uh, from from NICE, um, mm -hmm. she identified that. But in some ways that goes right back to chatbots.org dot, uh, dot mm. doesn't it chris when there was over 200 mm. names of chatbots and um mm. as i uh as I, I i saw in reference earlier on today that um somebody had mentioned uh, or at least recognized that the new ar vr uh apple headset mm. didn't mention artificial intelligence at all yeah yeah interesting, um, interesting. yeah interesting it's, well, the, it's I... the kind of terms isn't it that yeah ended up i know polluted. they just change over the years don't they um but um of course and but i think the interesting thing for from our perspective is a few things really um about this first of all yeah we welcome obviously um the uk being a center of of ai i mean that would be and a real focus on it from the government that would be obviously that would be fantastic i mean it's interesting you know financial services obviously being a big thing especially for london and where we're based the isle of dogs slash canary wharf and uh, seeing ai being a, a big center it's, it's already a big center of technology in london especially the east end of london where i founded the company uh, as you know so it's it, that, that's quite an interesting um, aspect to it all but i guess what i'm skeptical about is i'm not in for banning things um uh, i just you know don't think that really works but um but I, I, i'm just a bit skeptical about two things one is this all being controlled by massive companies in silicon valley i mean that's a big concern on its own but i'm also concerned that governments won't be able to kind of move quickly enough to to keep up um they, they're just so slow to do things so there has to be a, a coming together in some way of the enterprise fast you know rapid approach and and what governments are able to do I, you know I, 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 it needs to be something new i think there yeah, that's 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 in my my, my opinion because mm. because i don't think either of those are, are kind of good situations when we we think about their kind of safety issues and you know how it affects um you know the next generation that, that are growing up as well and and you know i just know how quickly we've had to act as a company to adopt this technology in our product and what that's taken you know we've had to change the structures within our company very quickly and just within a matter of months, uh, be able to embrace this and, and make it work. And and the instruments of government just don't work that quickly. And 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 that's my concern around it all. But but mm -hmm. very much welcome the UK being a a, a centre of excellence and a, a, a nice place to 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 create these uh, technologies for organisations as as we mm -hmm. move forward.